In today's video, we're going to react to some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. We have to talk about what this kid is saying in this video because I don't think he's making it up. Before I play the video, there is context. So this mother and son are watching scenic relaxation videos. He suddenly starts crying because he has this really bizarre memory. A lot of people are saying that, oh, he's just dreaming or he has a vivid imagination. I don't believe any of that. I'm about to play the video, but watch this part when he leans back and he like stares upward. It's almost like he's having some sort of vision. What's wrong? What's wrong, buddy? Talk to me. What happened? Give me, give me, give me what my mom. Okay. Work. What you're talking about? We passed away. Who passed away? What are you talking about, baby? The river made us pass away. The river did? Yes. Who? The river made me and you pass away? Yes. A long time ago? Yes. Um, and now we're back. Okay. And you got that from Scenic Relaxation and AK. Yeah, they did. Okay. So, we died. Is that what you said? No, I passed away. Okay. No, we didn't do that. We, we just passed away. In the river? Yes. Okay, and why do you feel like that? <coughs> because I passed the way in the river. By yourself? He, with you. Oh, with me? Yes. I was with you? I want to pass the way again. You are? <coughs> I want to again. You want to again? Yes. Why? <laughs> because I don't want to be here. You don't want to be here? No. Say all that. What made you say that story? It was a story. It's not. It's not a story. Don't eat your boogers, buddy. We'll wipe them. No. Oh. I want to eat boogers. Oh. Okay. Okay. Let's 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 not do that. Okay. Let's do that. Does it make you feel better? Yeah. Does it make you not want to pass away no more? Let's, yes. Okay. Let's not want to pass away no more. Okay. Why? Because mommy would be so sad. Did you want to pass away with me? I will go anywhere with you, buddy. Why? Because I'll never leave you alone. Ever. I'll do it. I'm always going to be here for you, okay? Okay? Will you pass away for me? I sure would. I sure would, dude. I just... I just don't understand what made you think of this, buddy. Now, I always find reincarnation and past lives an extremely interesting topic because there are so many details that kids can actually give during those situations where they shouldn't even know anything about it. Let me know what you guys think about this. I do think that this kid is being genuine as far as remembering something. A lot of people in the comments, they're saying that, you know, he might just have an over-exaggerated imagination or he was told that he had a past life and he's just putting things together but i don't know this kid really seems like he's remembering some things strange lights in the sky seen moving in a circle over nagpur sightings of various un unidentified flying objects have mystified experts time and time again some say it's aliens visiting us and others claim they're already here at times there's explanations for the phenomenon such as broken satellites drone shows and jets but more often than not these sightings leave us scratching our heads. A video shared fairly recently on Instagram purportedly shows the bottom of a UFO hanging in the sky above a house in Nagpur. Make of it what you will. The second long clip opens up with a shot of the sky right above someone's house. In the gray sky, there's a bunch of strange lights moving in a circle and moving really fast. The show goes on without stopping, leaving onlookers gawking in amazement. 
There's even someone making a video, as can be seen at the bottom right of the frame, some three seconds in. There's not much else for perspective, although the house is sh in the shot gives it some scale. It's also unclear when and by whom the video was shot. The video was shared on Instagram on July 7th and ranked up 846,000 views, 15,652 likes, and comments to match. Honestly, I would think that those are probably show lights or some kind of stadium lights that are just flashing in the sky in a circle, but I could be completely wrong. If you guys have any guess to what that could have been, leave a comment down below. If you ever want to take down the world's internet, this is where to strike. Almost 99% of all internet traffic, including this video, runs on this hidden network of undersea cables. But how do they even put them in place and how do they fix them? Isn't the ocean like a million miles deep and we haven't even fully explored the bottom yet? Do they just let them dangle through the water, float them on the surface, or... So the entire world is connected by these long ass cables in the ocean with 493 three active cables coming up to a total of 1.5 million kilometers long. That's enough to go from Earth to the moon and back twice. But wait, isn't pretty much everything wireless at this point? I honestly thought that like satellites would be our main source of connectivity today, but no. Even the phone in your hand connects to data not by satellite, but through cell receiving towers, which are connected by cables. And these cables are installed by ship, which yes, lays them directly on the sea floor by just kind of spooling them out from the back and moving very, very slowly. But sometimes there will be underwater trenches and having them hang across like this would be prone to breaking. So they just kind of keep unrolling the cable until it reaches as close to the bottom of the trench as it can. Now these cables, they pretty thick. Reinforced with multiple layers of protection as sharks have been found chewing on them. And can sometimes be quite hefty on the inside as you can imagine with fiber optic cables nestled safely deep deep inside of them where the data transfer actually happens. So whenever you message someone across the world, your message is literally traveling through these cables at about the speed of light since fiber optic uses light pulses that are converted to binary code which traverses through the deepest depths of our oceans in a couple seconds before getting to the recipient. Accidental breaks in the cable do happen every so often and they either send an underwater drone like this to repair it or they just pull that part of the cable out of the water and fix it on a ship before setting it back down. They obviously have a lot of backup cables and alternate paths in place so even if some evil villain were to cut one of these cables to destroy society it would just cause internet slowdowns in the area similar to a traffic jam when a road is closed and would probably be fixed in a couple days anyway. For now wired internet connectivity remains king as it's cheaper and faster than satellite internet like Elon Starlink but who knows where the future will take us i wonder how much a job like that pays you know someone that operates on laying these cables working on them that has to be a very well-paying job if any of you know of anyone that does this for a living or if you do it for a living let me know because i'm actually kind of interested in this i find it really cool you are all dead and not one of these people are real and we now actually have proof this shows the scariest mysteries and theories from around the world from the ones you all know about at the top to the darkest of the dark at the bottom that will literally change your life. And of course in this series we're going from the top to the bottom. This one will trip you out a lot, especially when you see the new evidence. Simulation theory has been a huge talking point for god knows how long. What is life? Do we live in a simulation? Are there people controlling us? Now the scary thing is there is more evidence to suggest that we are in a simulation than not. So think about the development of AI and technology nowadays. It is so advanced. To the point where there is self-aware AIs now that you can program something to feel like it is real. And there are even certain games where there are self-aware AIs that might even not realise they're in a game. And as this goes on, it's going to get more and more advanced to the point where AI will be living in a universe that they think is completely real, but is controlled by us. And this could happen again and again and again. So think about it, a game where the AI in there thinks that they are real and living in a real world. When they advance, what are they going to do? create a game, they could put self-aware AI in it, and it just goes on and on and on to the point where it's like a universe in a universe in a universe and just go on for infinity. And there is theoretically no reason and no way to disprove this either at the moment that we are not inside of some kind of game or simulation and are just programmed to feel like we are in control. Now, this guy is James Gates. He's a theoretical physicist and is extremely smart. He's a lecturer and everything. And what did he find? He found actual binary code binary code embedded into our own reality. Thanks to the help of something called string theory, which I'm not going to go into. Now, binary code is only found in computer softwares, games, technology, which there is no reason how or why that would be in our universe, but it is. So what the hell does that mean? I personally do not believe that we are living in a simulation. Now, does that mean that I don't think that we could create some kind of artificial intelligence that believes that it's living in a simulation? Of course, I think that that is definitely possible. 
But as far as us being in one, I do not believe that. Or if we are, this is by far the best one ever created. And we have a long way to go to be able to perfect our own. Now, a theory that I do like is if we are in a simulation, we are in a... We are in what I would like to call an organic simulation, one that is an actual real world that is controlled by some bigger, greater entity. If you want to call that God or whoever it is or whatever it is, they do not work off of electronics. They do not work off of technology like we do here on Earth. They work off of some kind of organic technology, something that's made out of living tissue or living matter. And that's why the Earth and the universe is the way it is. If we want to go into that route of simulation, we might be in one like that. But I still have my doubts. Let me know what you guys think about this theory. If you're on the East Coast, I hope you're getting ready for Hurricane Debbie. It's going to be bad, y'all. This girl just posted this video and said 40 men have ran up last week in Charleston. I can confirm. And this right here is an older video of Florida, so Florida, Hilton's Head, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, all up the East Coast. It's going to be like this. Meteorologists are freaking out over this radar image because the pink, which I believe is like 20 inches of rain, might be 30, but is like catastrophic. Also, it's a slow-moving storm, and it might go really slow through this part. So, I mean, it's going to be catastrophic flooding, power outages, it's going to be really bad. Also, with the last hurricane, we're seeing a double barrel again in rapid intensification. But hey, we knew that was going to happen. Make sure you get what you need and fill those cars up with gas. Me personally, I'll be driving to Charleston or Hilton Head so I can record it because I'm really close, so stay tuned for that. Looks like I need a boat though. And if y'all see one of these, you better let me know. Yes is real. I'll prove it with old historical data later. Man, I gotta see that weird looking mermaid thing. That thing looked crazy for it to be real. And I do live in South Carolina, and with this Hurricane Debbie or Tropical Storm, I'm not going to lie. It could have been a lot worse. I'm actually in the portion of that map where it did show the pink right next to the yellow. I, that is my area. And we were supposed to get around 30 inches of rain. Now, we did get a lot of rain, and it's still raining. It's actually... It's raining outside right now. And uh, it's, it's pretty bad, but to be honest, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It could have been a lot worse. Actually, one of the reasons why I'm in my house again and not in my office is because I didn't want to risk any water damage or any wind damage to my gear here. And for anyone that had to go through this and actually suffered with massive amounts of water damage, I am so sorry for that because I know how that is. I've lost a lot of things through five different hurricanes in my life and I understand how it is to go through something so bad. That's why I'm always on edge when this kind of weather is arising because it, it just kind of PTSD, I guess. Let me know if any of you had to deal with Debbie. Let me know if Debbie affected you in any ways. So far for me, no power outage, no flooding, no major flooding. It did get a little difficult to go to work this morning, but other than that, not too bad. This video is going massive right now, and what it shows is actually really weird. Montez Ford is a wrestler for the WWE. During this match, he appears to completely freeze up in front of his cameraman. The video was caught from multiple angles, and I'm going to show you guys both. Aside from our building, exclusive items, and so much more, all at the Rec Room in downtown Toronto. Open through Sunday. Everybody around him is trying to snap him out of it at this point, but he doesn't budge. People are saying that this is proof that he's some sort of robot or a clone or a synthetic human. I myself have made multiple videos on events like this, including the time everybody saw Shaq completely freeze up on live TV. Although I love conspiracy theories, I don't know if this is something that is legitimately happening or if it's just celebrities keen on the fact that they'll go massively viral if they play this prank. What do you guys think? I'm kinda on the board with 
celebrities know that they can go viral by playing like this, where they act as if they're a robot frozen. I think they've probably seen enough influence online at this point. They're like, eh, we can probably get an extra few eyes on me if I act like a robot malfunctioning. That's my guess because, I mean, this is wrestling and most people in wrestling are really good actors. So it wouldn't surprise me if this is just an act for publicity. The necromantic and demonic secrets of ventriloquism. Ventriloquism is the production of the voice in such a way that the sound seems to come from a source other than the vocal organs of the speaker. It is a form of stagecraft that is commonly called, quote, the ability to throw one's voice. It usually involves the use of a puppet or dummy. So all those movies about creepy fucking dolls were onto something. But did you know ventriloquism was originally a religious practice? The Greeks referred to it as gastromancy. They believed the noises produced by the stomach were voices of the undead, who had taken residence in the practitioner's body, or in this case, the ventriloquist. Essentially, this was used as a form of divination. At times, it was even used to predict the future. One of the earliest forms of this was the Pythia, a priestess at the temple of Apollo in Delphi, who was used for the Delphic Oracle. During the 16th century, Christianity considered ventriloquism, quote, to be regarded a practice spawned by hell itself, unquote. Some believed that demons were to blame for the words coming out of the host's mouth. But it didn't stop there. They also believed mysterious voices could come from other holes in the ventriloquist's body. <laughs> My grandma got me this really cool ventriloquist puppet that she found, I think, at a flea market or something. Nonetheless, I used the crap out of that thing, and I practiced a lot. And to the point where it got annoying to my parents and grandparents and creepy. And I find it really cool that it used to be called gastromancy. I did not know that at all. That was a new one to me. There's one thing I learned too, um, the mattress superstition about feng shui. What's a mattress one? So like, you shouldn't actually have a mattress, a welcome mattress, going into your or house. Or a mat. Yeah, Like a, a mat. rug. Yeah, a mat. Oh, no, no. It's specifically the welcome ones. Why? Because that's literally a welcome sign for all that either a demon, a... Uh, uh, a spirit or bad energy to come into your house. Anything is welcome now. Ooh. So they say welcome, boom. And there's three things I learned from a, a, a person that studies from feng shui. Yeah. So you're not allowed, you, you shouldn't have a mattress with a name on it. So like, welcome, uh, we go family house and it says on a mattress. Do you know why? Not a mattress, just a mat. Yeah, like a mat. Like, like yeah, a rug, mat. yeah. Yeah, the, a welcome mat. Yeah. And it shouldn't say your name because when people come in and step on it, it's kind of like a negative oh, they, energy. Yeah, they're, they're disgracing they're, it. They're disgracing it, yeah. And there's another one where you can't have like, um, go away because it's already negative energy. So whenever people see that go away and they come into your house, already, what is it? Negative energy, negative mm. energy filling through the house. And I think the last one is, um, it's the, you're not allowed to have a dirty mat because it's like, it's a sign of like neglect and like already people, it's like it blocks positive energy into the house. So like if mm. your mattress, like your welcome mat is dirty already. One of the feng shui things I've seen too is yeah. you should never put your bed near a window. Even though the bed was there is by a window. You know, you should... I heard the mirror one, but not the bed. I mean the window. By a window, yeah. Why? I think you're supposed to, it's supposed to be adjacent from the window and it shouldn't, you shouldn't have a clear like sight of it. Like, so the, the reason being is because, because this is what they say, like a sniper could like, could like oh, okay. snipe you while you're sleeping. That's like the yeah, oh, that But thing. there's more. There's more to it. But that's one of the things that you're you're vulnerable. Yeah. So if people can see you, naturally, if you're by a window and people pass by, they probably look at your window. So there's energy directed towards there. Hey, I'm all about feng shui. I really like having things set up a specific way for me. It really helps build my vibe up, if you will. And that's a good point with the welcome mat. Yeah, you probably shouldn't welcome just anything that approaches your door. And as far as the bed up against the window, I can agree just simply not having a bed by a window just in case some kind of natural disaster happens. I don't know if necessarily because of a sniper, but definitely because of natural disasters. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I'm really sorry it was cut short today. I'm still going through Hurricane Debbie, or I think it's actually a tropical storm now, but it is raining, and I do not want to record for too long because I never like to risk my electronics during storms. So I hope you don't mind that the video was short today. And as always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description for each one that we watched. 
And with that being said, have a good day.